how's everyone feeling? Y'all already know if you've ever been on any of my calls before, I'm big on energy. I believe that high energy equals high income. So I believe that, you know, energy momentum is created by the leader. So if I'm on this call and I want you guys to be excited, I want you to be enthusiastic. I got to make sure that I'm doing it first, right? So I want everyone to get in, in peak state. I want you to get excited right now because tonight we're going to be talking about some things that, you know, I think can help every single person on this call tonight if you listen, if you learn, and if you apply, okay? I want everyone to drop listen, learn, and apply in the chat, okay? That, that's literally the key to success. First, you've got to listen. Then you've got to learn. Then you've got to apply. If you skip any of the steps, the process doesn't work. So tonight you're gonna to be listening. But while you're listening, I hope you've got pen and paper because that's how you learn. And then once we get off of this call tonight, I want everyone to start applying immediately, okay? The word of the night is immediately. Nothing we're talking about tonight is for you to do next month or to do in six months or to do tomorrow. It's to do when? Immediately. Because I'm sure every single person on this call tonight, you want your situation to change immediately. Right? You want more money in your bank account when? Immediately. You want to be able to walk off of your job when? Immediately. Right? You want to be able to, to have one of the biggest solar brokerages in the country when? Immediately. So if you want immediate results, guys, you've got to be willing to take immediate action. And that's something that I learned because I listened to someone who was way more successful than me and I applied and my, my, my results started to change immediately. Now, what I'm going to tell you, the things we're going to talk about tonight, everything is not going to happen right away. But you've got to have the intention first. And tonight, I want to talk about taking ownership of your business immediately. Okay? If you're with me tonight, drop immediately in the chat. Because that's what we're talking about. Taking ownership of your business. How many people on this call tonight can say that by dropping a, 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 by, by a show of ones in the chat, if you know that the opportunity we have right here at Harbor right now is a once in a lifetime opportunity, drop a one in the chat. If you know that you're at the right place at the right time, connected to the right people, and you know that solar is the future, drop a one in the chat. See, everyone on this call right now, you already acknowledge that we've got an opportunity of a lifetime. But the challenge is some of us may not be getting the results we want in our business right now. But the first thing is that you know that you've got your hands on something special. True or true? Now, today is Sunday, and I don't know what you believe, and I believe in God. And I'm a believer that everything in this life belongs to God and comes from God. Okay? So I believe that this opportunity of being a part of Harvard is a God-given blessing. If you believe that, drop some tools in the chat. And if you know that what we have our hands on today, right now, is a God-given blessing, We've got to be good stewards of what we've been given. True or true? We've got to be good stewards of opportunities. See, a lot of us, we already know that we got to be good stewards of our money. We got to be good stewards of our time. We've got to be good stewards of our talents. But guys, we got to be good stewards of opportunities as well. And what we have right here is no accident. It's no coincidence. It's divine timing and alignment that you are here at the beginning of something special. And you gotta make a decision right now that you're gonna take ownership of your business because you have a due diligence to be a good steward of this opportunity. Now, I want you to think about this. I want you to understand that some of us aren't getting the results we want. And y'all, when I'm talking to y'all, I'm talking to myself. The notes that I wrote for tonight's training was me self-reflecting on Sophie. My business isn't booming the way I want it to boom yet but I understand that it's my responsibility. I've been treating this business up to this point like it was rented. I want you to write this down. Renting versus ownership. Renting versus ownership. Now, y'all could be real, and if you're gonna be 100% on this call tonight, y'all know that we treat things we rent a little different from things we own. True or true? If you are in a rental car, guys, we treat them rental cars crazy. We be driving crazy. We don't care to clean it. We'll tr drop trash all in the back seat. The kids can eat as much as they want in the car because you don't care. Because there's a certain feeling that comes with renting. 
you know that you're not the owner, so you don't take good care of it. True or true? The only thing you do with that rental is make sure you don't scratch it so the car rental don't charge you, and you put exactly how much gas they gave you. You're not, if, if you, they gave it to you on three quarters, I promise you, you're not taking it back full. Because that's just a mindset around renting. Ownership, on the other hand, if you own your car, ain't no eating in your car, you go into the car wash once a week, you wipe it down the smudges on the windows, you want to make sure your car gas is full, you go for regular service, regular oil change. Is this true, y'all? We treat things a little different when we're renting from when we're owning. And I want you to understand tonight that a lot of us have been treating this business like we're renting it. We're not treating it like we're, we own it. We're treating it like, you know, this is Harvard's thing. This is, you know, Josh Hatch and Justin and the Solar Pros thing. We, we, we just getting in where we fit in. There's no way you're going to be able to make a lot of money to change you and your family's life with that mentality. You got to take ownership. And that's what I had to say to myself. I say, so you got to treat Harbor Solar like this is your company. Like you are in corporate. Like everything from day one to day 31 is all you. You got to accept responsibility. You got to own it. And when you start to move with the ownership vibe, everything changes. Because now you're, you're checking your back office every day. You want to make sure that everything's functioning. You're checking your sales reps because they're part of your team. You want to make sure that they, they're good. They're trained. They're knowledgeable. You want to be out here actually learning as much about solar as you possibly can. See, guys, one of the things I've noticed just with my short time being in the field here in Harbor, it's like after a lot of people go through their certification on the, on the port in the back office, that's it. You don't, you don't learn anything else about solar. Guys, I'll give you all a, ha a hack. Every day, I'm learning something about solar. It's not from the Harbor back office. I'm on YouTube University. I'm on Google. I'm talking to ChatGPT to find out what I can learn to be able to explain this and break this down at the simplest level. See, write this down, y'all. Periods of preparation is pivotal for progress. Periods of preparation is pivotal for progress. What does that mean? You got to prepare. You got to prepare. See, joining Harbor and being a part of what we have, I'm paying you $99 or paying you $199. Guys, that's just the beginning. That's just the down payment. The real work starts after you get started. Yes, you've got to go through the five steps of success that we teach. But after that, what else are you doing to prepare yourself to be a solar professional? See, don't just think about solar pro as a part of the curriculum after you've closed five solar deals. Yes, you're going to be able to get paid differently as a pro, but you got to assume solar professional right now. What are you doing every day to make sure you understand how solar works? Do you understand what net meter is? Do you know the difference between grid tied solar and off grid solar? Do you understand how solar panels or someone roof produces energy? And if you don't, that's okay, guys. But if you're a professional, you got to prepare. And that's what you've got to be doing in your spare time if you really want to build your brokerage. See, that's the difference between great people and good people. People who are good, they're going to do the bare minimum. But people who are great, they're going to go exceedingly abundant above. Who, who's on the call tonight? Are you average or are you above average? I want to know who's on the call. Okay? So I want everyone to make a decision tonight that, one, you're going to take ownership of your business. But secondary, you're going to take time to prepare to be a professional, to be a professional. Let me ask you guys something. I want you to answer this in the chat. Who gets paid more, amateurs or professionals in any industry? Amateur athletes, amateur musicians. Who gets paid more, amateurs or pros? Everyone in the chat is saying pros. So if you know that pros are paid more, what are you doing to make sure you're a pro? That's a self-reflection question. And these are the kind of hard questions that I have with myself, usually on Sunday afternoons. That's my quiet time. When I sit down and say, Sophie, what are you doing? Why you ain't got no bills submitted this, this week? I actually got a bill submitted this week, okay? But these are the kind of questions I ask. I'm like, why you ain't had no calls this week? How come you didn't have 10 people on presentations this week? And I gotta be accountable and I can say, you know what I was playing? 
I really didn't learn much. So I was then excited enough to do content. And then if I don't do content, I don't get leads. So guys, what I want y'all to understand is this, and this is just something that's helped me. The more I learn about this industry, clean energy, renewable energy, solar energy, the more I know, the more confident I become in sharing that information. See, the reason that a lot of you guys aren't confident in solar is because you don't know enough about solar yet. And whose fault is that? It's your fault, guys. That ain't your upline's fault. That ain't Justin's fault. That's not Kevin Nordine's fault. That's not Coach Henry's fault. That's your fault. Because you started a business and what this infrastructure has given us is a framework and has given us tools, but the things that's going to make you a professional are the things you do in your spare time. How are you preparing for your progress? Does this make sense? Here's another thing I want everyone to do. I want you to make a decision right now that you're going to have tunnel vision. Okay? Tunnel vision. That means don't look left, don't look right. Eyes on the prize. Eyes on the goal. As an organization, 100 level 7 consultants and above by next year, 20, by the end of 2025. That's, that's a collective goal. What's your goal that's a part of that? Are you going to be one of the 100? Are you going to help a couple people be one of a, a few of the 100? How many people in that 100 is going to come out of your brokerage? How much time on a daily basis do you spend thinking about this? Guys, if you don't spend any time thinking about it, it's not going to happen. I promise you, success is not accidental. It's intentional. It doesn't happen by accident. So if you want to be a level seven consultant or have a brokerage that has multiple level seven consultants in it, you got to almost be obsessed with the goal. You got to have tunnel vision. You got to be laser focused on the goal. You have to check this out. I'm looking at my book right now, my notebook, but look what I have stuck in the middle of the pages. I got the leadership lifestyle bonus chart because every day I'm looking at that monthly payout and I'm looking at how much people need to be in my brokerage to get the goal done. You got to see it all the time. If y'all look behind me and if y'all see dirt, excuse me, y'all sort of see those black frames. Y'all see those frames, black and white. Those are my goals. I see them all the time. So when I'm eating, I see the goal. When I'm working, I see the goal. When I'm slacking off watching YouTube, I see the goal. How often are you seeing your goal? Tunnel vision. And here's three reasons why you've got to have tunnel vision. Because if you don't have tunnel vision, you know what you're doing? You're doing this. You're glancing. You're looking over there. You're looking over here. Y'all remember back in the day in school, if you were taking a test and you didn't know the answer to the question, what's, what happened naturally? Coach Henry is a, is, a, is, a, is a principal. So Coach Henry, this is what the kids be doing at school. Christy, she's an educator. This is what the students be doing, y'all. They start looking left. They start looking right. They're looking like anyone's paper who might have the right answer. And that's what we start to do in adulthood. We start, if, if life isn't going the way we want it to go, if we're not seeing the results show up in our life the way we want it to show up, we start glancing. We start looking over here, looking over there, looking all around. And in this age of social media, it's more in our face than ever. But here's three results of glancing why you've got to have tunnel vision. The first one, y'all, is comparison. When you start looking here and looking there, you start comparing yourself and your life to other people. You start saying, why is that person getting deals and I'm not? Why is this person brokerage growing and, and it's not? And mine isn't. Comparison is the thief of joy. See, when you compare yourself to other people, it either makes you feel inferior or it makes you feel superior. And something I learned a long time is that, humbly speaking, I ain't better than nobody, but nobody's better than me either. So I don't compare. Because what a lot of people do is they compare their day one to someone's year 10. You can't compare. Why are you even doing that to yourself? Okay? You're sabotaging your, yourself. See, and a lot of times when we look on social media, we see people who look like they're making all this money in their business. And maybe you've been doing it just as long and you ain't making the money. What it causes you to do, guys, is it causes you to slow down. No one looking left or looking right goes faster. You always slow down. So comparison not only makes you feel less than, makes you feel like you should be further ahead than you should, it also causes you to go slow. And success loves what, guys? 
Success loves speed. It loves speed. So if you're trying to win a race and it's your own race, why would you want to slow down? Stop looking left. Stop looking right. The second thing that happens when you start to glance and you start to look left and start to look right, the second thing that kicks in is competition. We start to compete. Now, nothing's wrong with friendly competition, but ultimately, guys, competition equals division. When we start to compete, people start to feel salty because you start to feel inferior because you're, in, you're comparing and now you're in competition. You try to dim the light of other people so you can shine. That's what competition does. That's why one of the things I love here at Harbor is one team, one dream. We're all one brokerage. We're all speaking the same thing. We're all moving to the same sound. We're all following the same steps because competition creates division. And we don't have no time for division right now, y'all. We don't have time in Harbor when we have so many goals to achieve to be trying to dim other people's light. We ain't about that life. If, you, if, you, if you've been in other businesses before, that might have been the culture. And it's a toxic environment. Nothing can grow there. But here, we're making sure we do things the right way from the ground up. So sometimes I've seen it happen before where people who have a toxic mindset or have toxic habits come into this environment, they feel uncomfortable and they don't stay. Because there's no competition. There's no division. There's no comparison. Does that make sense? But the third thing, that's a result of glancing, guys. The third thing, the third thing, when you look left and you look right, is celebration. See, if you look left and you look right, you see someone closing deals. You see someone like a Christie, you know, farmer, closing deals every single week. You don't look at her and say, oh my God, what's she doing different than me? You don't look at her and say, oh, she must have experience. No, you celebrate her. You get excited for her because you say, listen, if she can do it, I can do it too. And what you celebrate in your life or in the life of others, you accelerate in your own life. One thing we've got to do better, y'all, and everyone on this line, I'm starting with myself and all the leaders and every single person on this call tonight, you're a leader because you're here. We got to do better when it comes to celebration. When someone says they introduce someone to the group, let's celebrate them. Celebrate them that you enrolled them. When someone closes a deal, we supposed to be ecstatic and going crazy in the group chat. Celebrate it. Because what you celebrate, y'all, you accelerate. And guess what? Celebration is contagious. So if we start to create a culture of celebration, new people who join us, it, it's, gonna, it's a process of osmosis. They're going to celebrate just because they feel like it's the thing to do. Now we're helping to develop good habits. Is this making sense? Guys, remember this. See, when you celebrate someone else, instead of trying to dim someone else's light when you're in competition, when you're in celebration, now you're actually adding light to their fire. And guess what? Think about a candle, yo. Think about a candle. If you've got a candle, say I've got, I wish I had a candle to do this analogy, but y'all gotta just use your mind with me. Use your imagination. Let's say this was a candle and this was not this was not lit. Just a candle. And let's say I had this candle right here and it was lit. And I actually used my candle and light the fire of another person. My light doesn't go out because I lit someone else. My light doesn't get any dimmer because I lit someone else. See, what we got to understand is when we light each other's fire, the whole room gets brighter. And that's what we have to do as a culture. That's what we have to do as an organization is we got to celebrate each other more. We got to celebrate every single thing. If someone submits a bill, celebrate they just, they just made 10 grand. Because what that's going to do is that's lighten their fire. That's lighten their enthusiasm. That's lighten their excitement. And that's going to, one, make them believe bigger, but everyone else is going to be excited as well because celebration is contagious. So guys, I told y'all we wouldn't be on this call long. I don't have to keep you on the call an hour tonight. I just wanted to give you guys something that I thought would be able to fuel your fire tonight. See, tonight I want everyone to decide that you're going to stop glancing and start grinding. Drop that in the chat. Stop glancing and start grinding. That's what we got to do. We're in the middle of July. Everyone get laser focused, locked in. 
for the next, what, five months of this year. Start grinding. Stop looking left. Stop comparing. Stop competing. Celebrate every single person that's a part of this thing of ours and be a good steward of this opportunity that God has blessed us with. I'll leave y'all with one thought, okay? Y'all can tell I've been to church this morning. The measure of your faithfulness is your fruitfulness. The measure of your faithfulness is your fruitfulness. So the way that you're able to show the creator who created us to create that we have been good stewards and we've been faithful with the opportunities and the blessings that he's given us is we got to produce fruit. You can't just think about it, talk about it, want it, and do nothing. You've got to move. you got to believe. you got to act. And you got to bear fruit. Because only based on your fruit, <laughs> your works are known. Guys, take what God has given us, grow it, expand it, prepare, become a solo professional. And what I want you all to do is everything we talked about on this call tonight, I want you to start implementing it when? Immediately. So I hope you guys got value from the call. Make sure you're in Nashville, Tennessee, October 12th and 13th. Early bird tickets are still on sale. Grab them while they're for the low because they will go up. And you will be kicking yourself when you can save yourself 50 or 100 bucks on your ticket. Grab them now. That's the first commitment to making sure you're in the building. And that's a form of taking action immediately because your faithfulness is shown by your fruitfulness. And one of the ways we know if you're fruitful is if you're at the event coming up in Nashville in October. So you guys have a good night. God bless. I appreciate y'all for hopping on the call. If you got some value, definitely go ahead and drop some sevens in the chat. And let's have a beautiful, productive, uh, income producing week ahead and go out here and better your best and do whatever you can to make sure that your future is bright. Have a good night. God bless. And I'll talk to you all soon. Peace.